As an American martial lifestyle, Kuntao Silat is intimately connected to the blade. And uh, this goes way back in our history, back to Bowie knives and even before when swords and pistols by our side was the way we went down the roads in America. Well, it's back to that again. The gentleman on the left is going to be struck <laughs> with a knife in a bar, bar surroundings. He's going to come at the other guy. Okay, action. Oh, whoa! <laughs> All right, cut. Since the attack comes, we'll go in and just break everything down and begin the up. They set me hitting, blasting and bashing and tearing and, and ripping and knees and elbows and all the leaping off of the, the body, the, the better knife. The attack comes, there's the monkey. I'm done, gone, so that there's no problem. Expect the unexpected. Over the years, I've developed a philosophy and a practice of carrying several mini knives with me at virtually all times. I carry right-handed and left-handed and fixed blades and folders and ballet songs and just, you know, virtually all kinds of knives because there is always a use for them. And if you get used to having heavy pants and uh, carrying a bit of a, a load of metal with you, you'll find that you always have a use for a knife. And although, you know, we're talking about a self-defense issue now, there's a whole lot of other ways to use knives. And in order to get really comfortable with them, you really need to practice with them. And this is a little bit of live practice with live blades. There's no reason to practice with a dull knife unless you're practicing with a partner and you don't want to damage them because training partners are hard to find. <laughs> but this is a little bit about carrying a lot of knives with you as you go down your way. Greetings to you all and thank you for visiting us here at the BDT Academy. We're here today to talk about knives. Primarily, Sarasila is focused on the very unique use of those knives. In America, however, we have certain exigencies that are defined either by law or by custom or just social niceties. And there's a lot of, of nuances to knife carry in America that we want to look into, as well as the actual applications of the use of the knife. What I want to talk about here for a moment is some of the different styles of knives that an American may carry and how they may be accessed, what may be done with them. In most of our minds, the ballet song is the knife that has been most associated with martial arts. And you can go anywhere from the, uh, the Filipino versions of them to some of the more expensive Benjamin versions of it. Basically, with the ballet song, you don't have to worry about the lock. That's one of the things you do not have to worry about with the ballet song once it's open. However, you do have problems with legality. So we're going to set this aside for a moment and talk about more something that, that Americans can carry. At the outboard limit, uh, while I was with Spider Pro, I designed a knife primarily for police and military use. It was designed to be just right on the verge of legality, but yet small enough and compact enough to easily access, open with one hand, and have available immediately. It had enough of a, a, a butt to be used like a UR or a pressure stick, and it could be opened with one hand, either in the sarat position, which is played up, or in the normal um, American use position, which is laid down. This is on the verge of legality in most places. There is also a design with the tip up, where the knife sits in your pocket, tip up. And the draw on that is a little slower. It comes out of your pocket. And, and generally, it's the back end that's going to be drawn. It comes out of your pocket and into use, blade up. Closes with a lock sitting on the back, 
that a little tang up front to keep the uh, sharp part of the blade from dropping on your finger as you turn it and close it. I have seen legality issues even with a knife that size. So sometimes you get no more than that. And if that's all the knife that you get, you might as well get one with a serration on it. Knives uh, nowadays are made either right or left-handed. The idea of the left-handed knife is one that we developed uh, 20 years ago back in, in Spyderco days. Uh, it's now become fairly standard. One of the standards of the excellence in the knife world is the, the bench-made lock. Uh, this happens to be an axis lock. The lock sits here and is released by pulling back. So the knife can set right on the top of your pocket and open either left-handed or you can turn it over and put it in your right-hand pocket and it will open right-handed. So you have your, your choice either way of opening the uh, uh, Benjamin axis lock. In the quest for speed, there has always been the concept of a switch blade. And a switch blade is indeed fairly quick to get out. The problem, once again, that you have with switch blades is that they're illegal for anybody except police or military. So it's very rare that you'll see an American carrying a switch blade. What you will find, however, is like the skin onion design for Kershaw, you have what's called an assisted opening. And that is a liner lock. A liner lock provides a, a stop right on the front of the tank, so it's virtually impossible once that lock sets to close the blade. The blade is closed by releasing the lock, pushing it towards the clip, and then closing the blade on the non-sharpened part of the tank, which stops on your finger, and then you just close it up and put it back away. In the early days with Spyderco, I developed a, a pair that I called the pet pigs. This was back when they were called Pride, Integrity, and Guts. And this was designed absolutely for combat with a non-skid on it, slightly rounded on both sides. And once again, you have all of the, the mobility that you would need to use a blunt object and the ability to have the, the blade with you absolutely immediately any time that you would desire. The blade up and blade down concept is something that is new to me. I've, uh, I've never considered a blade any other than blade down until this weekend. And I had the good fortune of attending the Sarat camp here in uh, the VDT Academy. And one of the things that we learned was the, the effectiveness, the incredible effectiveness of as you're drawing a blade for it to be sharp side forward. Now, once again, th this is another example of something that Americans can't really do. You can't put a big old honking knife sheath on your, on your belt and go walking down the street. So we pretty much have to kind of forget this, too. The, the concept, and a lot of people still like to just play. And play is fun. If you're going to pull a bow and, and you want to blade up, then you just have the, the latch sitting down. If you want to pull the blade the regular way, the American way, then you can just set up the latch being on the top. If you want to draw the blade down, the latch being on the bottom, if you want to draw it blade up. And that's about uh, the extent of knives that we can carry other of course than some of our little necklace knives and some maybe little uh, belt buckle knives and, and things like that that are you know, kind of toyish in a certain way but very nice to have around. Thank you very much. Practice is absolutely critical when it comes to knives. You've got to build it into your daily life when you Grab a package to open. Grab your knife to open it with. When when you're when you're just playing around, you don't have anything better to do. You're playing with your ballet song. The best thing that you can do with a ballet song is throw it away. Then it's in somebody's foot, and you can grab 
and do what you need to do. But if you, if you take the time to actually practice your drawing thrust and things like that, you'll find that you can get a, a cardboard box that will work just absolutely beautiful. You grab your, your uh, knife, you open it, and as you would draw it, you twist it. So you get that twist that Jerry was explaining to you. When, when you do virtually anything that you're going to do, when you open a bag of potato chips, take your knife, use it, put it back where it goes. That way when you need it, you know right where that knife's going to be. Some of the things, as Mr. McClary mentioned, are a bit graphic. That is one of the realities of modern day life in America. I wish it weren't so. But always remember, the very best self-defense in the world is a great big smile. People ask oftentimes, what is the best knife to use for combat? And my opinion is, the knife that you're most comfortable with. If you're, if you're used to carrying a knife every day and <coughs> using it, uh, is there a cardboard box around here that anybody is aware of? Right there. Huh? Uh, yeah, but that's where okay. I carry merchandise. Okay. I guess, so I'll leave that when I go home. <laughs> okay, well, maybe, maybe we'll find one. But basically, during the course of the day, if, if, you're, if, you, want to, if you want to be comfortable with a knife, you have to actually use it. If, if, you, if you've got a hold of something that you need to cut, you take your knife, open it up, cut it, put your knife back away right where you're going. There you go, right there. There we go. Go. That one right there. Yeah. You want to be my own <laughs> Just take your arm right there. No, I'm telling you. I love this guy's willingness. <laughs> But in, in all seriousness, you, you have to get used to actually having your knife and using it. If you're left-handed, get a left-handed knife and use it, you know, whenever you're opening a bag of potato chips or cutting open your mail or what, whatever it is that you're doing. Ideally, when, when it comes time to actually use a knife, you're probably not going to have it in your hand if you're attacked. And the idea of a, a, a quick draw is probably irrelevant. But you want to get used to the idea of, of actually hitting something and then tearing the blade back out of it in a circular type motion. It, and it doesn't really matter you know, what, what kind of knife it is that you use. And if you've got a ballet song, the idea is still the same. It just doesn't make quite as big a hole. But, what, whatever you're going to do, make sure that you do it a lot. If, if you want a, a tip-up sort of knife, you can use that. If you want a tip-down sort of knife so that you can do the quick draw, then get one of those. If you want uh, something maybe a little more automatic, you can get an automatic knife. There's fixed blade knives, there's all kinds of knives that you can use. The choice is really up to you, but the idea is that you want to feel comfortable having that knife in your hand. Because about nine times out of ten, when you need it, it's going to be in your pocket, not in your hand. So you want to be comfortable in drawing it and putting it into action, whatever knife you choose. Um, there's always legality issues and all that stuff, so we're, we're not going to get too terribly far into that. I've got a, uh, a trainer here that's basically a, a fixed blade knife. I always call it uh, the world's fastest knife because of the way it, it's drawn and from where it's drawn. See, and one of the things that we've always been doing this whole three days is, is back to the Jewries. And nine times out of ten, the way things happen is, would you help me, Vince? Is an attack will come, and you don't have your knife with you, but you have your position, you have your everything else that you need. So as he assumes the position, now you can take your knife and finish the job. But you've got control of him already now, and you may not even need it. If you do need it, if he's if he's still got a live knife here then you want to make sure that this joint 
is not going to work before you even think of doing anything else. And then once you, you have that out of the way, then obviously there's you know, all the little fun things to do. Thank you, brother. So what, what we're going to do, I'm going to grab a uh, play knife here. And uh, Colin, would you help me out? <laughs> Nice knowing you, Colin. We'll go, <laughs> we'll go back. You can have my car. <laughs> we'll go back to the palm waving. Just the, the simplicity of the palm waving. Nothing complex. Like uh, Tony said a little earlier, it's always the simple stuff that works. You don't need to get complex. So as, as the stab occurs, we're going to just do just the regular waiter block. We're going to take eyes here because he's got a knife so eyes are, are well within the, the, the boundaries. And, and once the eyes are taken in, the pull brings you right where we want it. So there's your, your pooter can be done inside this way because we're still turning the head. Notice we still got the, uh, the knife controlled here and then all of the bleeding parts on both sides. And generally a good liver shot is a good place to leave this. And as this snaps out, that punches in and you're gone and this is inside there somewhere. <laughs> now these are terrible to think about. These are terrible things to think about. But that's the reality of life in America, unfortunately. So you, you want to get comfortable with your motions. And you notice in the palm wave, you've done this a million times. Simplicity, eh? If you're going to change your knife from hand to hand, why let go of it? Boom, it's in the proper position. Boom, it's in the proper <laughs> position. So take your little trainers and practice. Just your palm waving and punching. Palm waving and punching. See, if, if you have your knife in your hand, then as the attack happens, the punch is just there. Punch, bang, done. It, it starts in at the, at the very base of the throat, goes all the way around, and there becomes your pooter. Thanks. Thank you very much. So play, play away. You'll notice that oftentimes you'll see, see that player's punch, what looks like a very weak wristed punch, where things just don't align. But when you think of the alignment, here it goes. See that alignment? The blade is center of these knuckles. When you, when you see our, our, our leopard system, you'll notice that, that although you know, you've got that phoenix eye there or, or the, the actual leopard thing, the knuckles are right where your blade's going to be. So you can aim it that way. See, when, when, you, when you're actually in a position where you've got to use a knife, you don't have the, the liberty of missing much at all. So you want to make sure that your body is indexed, just the way that we started out. Remember how we found our position? Boom, boom. So it's the same exact thing as it would be if you were punching. The only difference is you've got a knife in your hand. So you get a wider latitude of um, target area, target rich environment. <laughs> Uh, technique number one. Now, th th this, this is just following along with what we've been doing the whole time. Nothing new, nothing different. All we're doing is as the attack comes, we're blocking it. Okay, here's the block. Here's the hit, like always. Here's the drag. 
I always. Now, at this point, it, you talk about changing the position of the blade. After this hit is the perfect time to flip this blade back around so that it's skinning everything right down to that thumb joint. And at that point, you can turn so that you get your nice elbow compulsion or whatever you want to do. You can hang on to this, reverse the blade again, and go right back where it goes. So it's just a simple matter of boom, bang, boom, bang. Just that simple. Just that easy. So pair off and give it a try. Uh, feel everybody's uh, edge. Make sure that you've got no rough edges on your trainers. That happens a lot. People get cut that way. What do you think? Yes, it comes in. Yes, it comes in. Yes, Blade turns. This also gives you a so you're a lot of meat you got me. Just adding all that up, Guru, that's going to be a lot to deal with. Yeah. About a pound of flesh. Don't forget to take it away. Yeah, see, that's what makes me I That's why you train. That's why you train. And that's why we're going to stick it in my You're, you're going 
going direct in. So as you punch, see it's just this. That's all you're doing. You're just going straight in. This is irrelevant. Doesn't matter. Once you, you, you get this contact, then you can make the way for some more. And if you don't have your knife out yet, that's okay. <laughs> well, that's okay, because now you're in a position where you can snap this down far enough to get to your blade. And once you get to your blade, you're in good shape. So now, thank you, gentlemen. So now, let's, uh, let's do sticky hand with a knife. And now everything just changes just a wee little bit. But now you start beginning to think of ways that you can turn your blade to use it for various hooks and various things. You don't want to be, you know, spinning and whipping and doing all of this stuff. Somebody just ching ching power, you know. Play away, gentlemen. Okay. I'd like to share with you my best blade handler. Mr. Steve, have somebody else take your... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got Eric, yes. Eric? <clears throat> it's on. And that is my best blade handler. Go ahead, take a knife away from him. <laughs> okay? Any you practice with him. Yeah. Okay, he's gonna show you some. Okay? Another of the philosophies that we hold quite dear in Kuntao Silat, especially the American Kuntao Silat, the American martial lifestyle, is that it is never too young to begin practicing Kuntao Silat. This is uh, Elijah the Rock back when he was oh, somewhere around five years old or somewhere in that neck of the woods. And he's just practicing both his uh, guarding hand and his blade hand and, and uh, using it to music, just to practice, to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> 